my name is Reese Fredrickson. I have been a resident of Pine County for seven years now. My wife and I moved here about seven years ago because we actually love the community. Um, we fell in love with the area. We wanted to start a family and raise them in a small town environment. We have a five-year-old son who attends school at East Central. He's a kindergartner. My wife works at East Central. Uh, we have a two-year-old daughter. And we're very involved in the community. And as a person who cares about his community, I'm concerned. I'm concerned about repeat offenders. I'm concerned that people aren't being held accountable for crimes. And I'm concerned especially about the rift between the county attorney's office and the sheriff's office. These are our taxpayer dollars. Uh, these type of things have got to end. As a prosecutor, I've got seven years of experience prosecuting serious crimes. I've done everything from uh, rapes, I've done a homicide, um, burglaries, assaults. I've got training from the Department of Homeland Security and the Secret Service and Forensics. I'm one of few prosecutors in the nation chosen for that program. I've got advanced DNA training. I have training in accident reconstruction. And prior to that, I've been a clerk to a judge, a well-known trial lawyer, for a year and a half. Prior to that, I worked in a large civil law firm. I've got the experience in many areas as an attorney. Thank you. Steve, uh, two minutes, same for you. Something about yourself, your biography, or your resume. That may not be Thank you all for giving us the opportunity to come here tonight and tell us to tell you a little bit about ourselves. Uh, I am not from Pine County originally. I chose to come to Pine County. My folks own a tree farm in Grantsburg, Wisconsin, and this area has been a part of my life, my entire life. I said I came here on my own volition. A job opportunity came up for me to move down here to Pine, and this is what I chose to do. It allowed me to be closer to my family, and this community has given me memories of hunting, fishing, camping, canoeing. I believe the St. Croix River, the trail systems we have here, are fantastic and I'm an outdoor kind of guy and that's the kind of stuff I like to do. I am involved in the community primarily in conservation groups. Uh, I'm in Pheasants Forever, National Wild Turkey Federation, Minnesota Deer Hunters Association, and I'm a new member of the Lions. Uh, I bring 15 years of prosecution experience to the table. Five years in St. Louis County before I came here to Pine County. In addition to that, I served two years as a defense attorney. One year at a private law firm, and another year as a public defender working for the Indian Legal Assistance Program. I also worked for the Saginaw Chippewa Tribe in Mount Pleasant, Michigan when I was in law school. I drafted their marriage and divorce code, and also their domestic violence code. Here in the county, I have experience with drafting other codes. Brett talked about the automated pond system. I'm the guy that drafted that and that's allowed us to catch a lot of criminals, and it's even what actually caused the big Pine Lake fires to be able to be solved. I'm running for county attorney because this is my home, and I want to give back to this community. Thank you. Okay, now the uh, question that the committee sent you in advance, uh, and this goes to uh, Steve first. As county attorney managing several assistant attorneys, how would you manage the office's caseloads so that cases are resolved in a reasonably prompt manner? I think we need a system so that the county attorney, who's the person that's responsible for managing the caseload, knows what's going on with all the cases that are in the office. The Pine County Attorney's Office consists of five attorneys that handle various caseloads. And without having some system in place to know what's going on. It's impossible for that person to know what's happening. What I would propose is to create a system using technology, the computers, and utilize the people that work in our IT department to create what's called a tickler system so that once a month, each time a case comes into the uh, attorney's office from the sheriff's department, the state patrol, the last tribal, what have you, that this gets logged in. And then the county attorney will get a report every so often. I would propose probably every two weeks to a month to know which ones have come in. Have they been reviewed? Has there been a charging decision made? Is there a need for further investigation? 
These are the things that need to be done. Uh, this allows the attorney to monitor the cases to make sure that nothing's slipping through the cracks. It also allows the attorney to monitor whether or not, when there is a request for follow-up investigation, if that investigation is done. And if not, then we can check up on that and see where it's at. Because it is necessary to have the complete information in order to charge a case. If you do not have the information, you can't do it. And that is what I would propose to do in order to be able to create a system to have the attorney that's managing all the other attorneys know what's going on and to make sure that the cases do not fall through the cracks. Okay, Reese, as county attorney managing several assistant attorneys, how would you manage the office's caseloads so that cases are resolved in a reasonably prompt manner? Now, there are two specific areas in the county attorney's office that is in dire need of leadership. Now, from a case, it's not between charging and it's not between from charging to the jury trial plea date. That period of time is largely taken care of by the court system. The leadership is needed in what happens before charging and what happens at the plea date and jury trial date. Before charging, about 46% or less than 46% of the cases that are investigated by the sheriff's office are actually charged by the county attorney's office. And a small percentage of the cases that do not get charged, um, there's probably a reason for that. They're probably not good cases to begin with. But there's a large percentage of cases out there, meritorious cases, that are not being charged by the current administration. And I know this from facts, I know this from speaking with victims, and I currently work on a case a sex case that happened in Hinckley here in Pine County that was not charged by the county attorney's office. These are good cases. The way to fix that, um, there's a couple things you do. One is teamwork. You have to work with the sheriff's office. There's a current rift between the sheriff's office and the county attorney's office. That can't happen when I'm county attorney. My prosecutors will be down in the sheriff's office having a direct conversation face to face working as a team from the beginning of the investigation to when it's charged. That makes the county attorney's office accountable to the sheriff's office and the sheriff's office accountable to the county attorney's office. That's how things are done, and that's what I do over in Canaba County. I have a direct relationship with all my officers. That's why I charge 98% of the cases that they investigate over there. I also would uh, assign prosecutors based on the crimes that they enjoy to prosecute, the ones they're passionate about. For instance, if a prosecutor likes burglary, I'm going to assign them two burglary cases. If they like working those cases, they're going to do a good job at it, and they're going to dig into them, and they're going to take the hard cases and make sure that they get charged and go to trial. The other thing, uh, Steve mentioned a tracking system. Well, there is a tracking system. It's in place in most of the county attorney offices in the, in the state. It's called MCAPS. The Pine County Attorney's Office has MCAPS. All you need is training to use it. I've got that training. There is a tracking system in place. We don't need to build one from scratch. The other issue is what happens at the end of charging. At the end, um, when we're looking at plea deals, these plea deals that uh, go from felonies to misdemeanors, cases getting dismissed, that's got to end. There are serious cases, there's people that are being put out on probation when they should be in prison, there are repeat offenders that are not being held accountable, that's going to end as county attorney. I'm going to make sure that there are minimum standards of plea deals in place, and I'm going to ensure if that a case is going to go to trial, it's going to get tried and not dismissed on the day of trial. Okay, next question. This is from the audience. And it goes to uh, Reese first. Would you agree to term limits for the county attorney position? Why or why not? I would absolutely agree with term limits. I, I think uh, if I were elected, I'd expect to serve two terms in this position. I think it's unhealthy for any government office to have a career politician. I think when you've got somebody that's been serving for decades, you have a particular culture that goes into the particular workers, and then now you have somebody who wants to take over that position that's been part of that culture and part of that dynamic. And it's led to things like that rift between the sheriff's office. It's led to things like the county of these cases not being charged. That's got to end. So yes, I do agree to term limits. Steve, would you agree to term limits for the county attorney office? Why or why not? I would probably respectfully disagree. Uh, 
I believe that there's what's called institutional knowledge. That's based on experience, it's based upon time, it's about learning how to run an office. Uh, there was talk before from Investigator Grindy, now running for council, about the time it takes when someone becomes a sheriff to actually get on board and get up to speed and learn how to do things. And I believe what was said was it takes up to three to four years to become effective. If we're talking about term limits of two years, we're talking about one year of effectiveness in your first term. Um, I don't know if those numbers are accurate or not, but the reality is experience gives you knowledge. Experience gives you the ability to gauge cases. Experience gives you the knowledge to look at the evidence and make decisions. Now, I'd like to address something as well. Um, there's been a lot of talk about 46% and 98%. And I don't know if it's inexperience or not knowing how to read the information, but the 46% that Mr. Fredrickson talks about is not a number that's related to the county attorney's office. The 2013 Minnesota Department of Public Safety Uniform Crime Report deals with the clearance rates by law enforcement. The 46% that he's talking about is the cases that law enforcement has cleared. And what is case clearance? Case clearance is when a law enforcement agency determines that a particular person has committed a crime, whether or not that person's arrested, or that the case is determined to be unfounded, that no crime occurred, or that the perpetrator has died. It's been alleged that the 46% rate in Pine County is a low number. Let's look at the other numbers in the 10th Judicial District. Anoka, 50%. Chisago, 43%. Isanti, 59%. Pine, 46%. Sherber, 61%. Wright, 57%. Washington, 47%. And what about large counties? Hennepin County, 40%. Ramsey County, 30%. St. Louis County, 43%. What is the statewide average? 48%. The 98% number that Mr. Fredrickson has talked about is not what he's charged. It's not his clearance rate. That is the number reported by the Sheriff's Department. And if you, uh, 